Hello everyone, I'm Siddharth and this is the Unsung Beast podcast. We have featured some of the most amazing and insane stories through our Tell Us Your Story campaign. And today we have with us Dr. Rita Jairat. She has won the National Bodylifting Championship for three consecutive years and has various national and international bodybuilding accolades under her belt. She is an IFBB pro and is the first woman to have represented India in any international competition. And now she's a part of the judging panel at the international shows of the highest level. Stay till the end to know more about the two revolutionary books she has been working on right now. So let's get right to this episode of the Beast Podcast. Hello ma'am, welcome to the Beast Podcast. Thank you for having me. Before moving on to the podcast, uh, we heard that you have recently recovered from COVID. So what was your experience of the second wave of COVID in India? Yes, uh, you know, it was amazing. Like we have been told, we have been given a COVID protocol by the government. I wasn't going out anywhere and I had gone to a to an event at Calcutta Stadium that was on trail. So uh, the incubation period of the virus is around 15 days. And, uh, you know, the 15 days had passed and on the 16th day, actually, I felt uh, a little feverish. Uh, maybe, you know, something might have just got, crept into my house. I do not know how. Uh, but we were really following the protocols. But I think that was, uh, you know, a very, very strong wave. And uh, at that time, everybody seemed to have got infected. Uh, so I felt a little feverish and the initial days of fever passed by. Um, uh, my, uh, I don't think my viral load was very high because I passed the first few days, but there is an auto uh, immune inflammatory response, which uh, comes up in the second phase uh, when you have the disease. And that was very, very strong. So, uh, you know, uh, sometimes having a very strong immune system can also have its own, uh, it's like a paradox. It can have its own repercussions. So uh, that was a very difficult period for me and it took me almost a month to recover from that. At that time I was on steroids and then uh, since I'm into a lot of physical activity, I'm into uh, Bharatnatyam and Kalari Pyat, I could not do you know a bit of what I was doing earlier. I couldn't even sit and write like that in itself I realized takes up a lot of energy. So it was uh, a very, very difficult period and then to recover was um, another challenge then then to get back to normal so i started again with baby steps and so like i'm i'm fine now and so as we know that uh, right now covid is like not considered more of an mental or an emotional trauma but it is it is considered more of a physical one what is your thinking about this particular thing that is it a men- more of a mental toll or the media has hyped up more or what is your take on this particular issue this is very subjective. Uh, some people just have fever and it passes by. But I feel that irrespective of whether it's ha- it has more of physical or mental repercussions, I think the more important thing is that it exists. It is it is a reality because a person like me with, uh, you know, I never had any health issues throughout my life, uh, way beyond the age of 50. And I actually had ground glass obesity in my lungs. So it's not a myth. It is it's a fact. The second thing is that if you have had a very healthy lifestyle, you will not have any comorbidities. Like the, uh, it takes over you and it has more of physical uh, implications. If you have had a liver problem or uh, you know any cardiovascular issues, uh, if your lung capacity is not good enough, if you've not been working on yourself or you have bad habits like you know uh, excess intake of alcohol, so it's actually a huge lesson also. Uh, the third thing is that uh, it teaches you, uh, you know, that you need to learn how to live with yourself. Uh, isolation is a very beautiful thing. You are your best friend. And, you know, you you need to be able to make optimum utilization of the time that you have um, in this world. We have very less time. Life is very uncertain. So it comes with these repercussions that how emotionally strong you are. Uh, if you are too much dependent on others, uh, even in life before and after that, we do not realize the kind of uh, you know repercussions that has. So uh, if you know how to live with yourself, if you've been you, you know utilizing your time constructively, it actually sometimes can give you a break 
and it can uh, help you to you know kind of reset your mind and your emotions so it's this is very very subjective so uh, any uh, like tips that you would give to boost your immunity during these particular times or just a general tips that you would give to the audience yes we heard a lot about vitamin c and the ayurvedic uh, treatments and kada and everything uh, definitely that works uh, but you know uh, that has its limitations you cannot blindly i have known people who have done an over uh, dose of vitamin c or you know all these uh, you know ayurvedic herbs you cannot you cannot if you if you still have the virus virus and you're still not following the covid uh, protocols once the virus is in you it will go through that phase and uh, you know its entire life cycle it will finish that so you you still need to follow the covid protocols that is actually the best immunity uh booster and uh, this these things can to an extent help you but then we we need to remember that that there is an autoimmune inflammatory response also um so the other thing when you talk about in your immunity is an indirect thing that if you are healthy otherwise if you are strong if you have like we people have a very good athletic reserve uh, i never felt any weakness throughout the one and a half month it was only the uh, difficulty in the lungs in breathing and you know see watching others that people have died of heart failures or cardiac arrest uh, or you know a lung collapse so you know we if you are ha- you're healthy otherwise uh, even if you contract it you will live through it uh, gracefully and come out and again you know you can be normal otherwise it will leave its uh, uh, impact on you uh, in some people for a, you know for a period of time and in some people uh, very permanently if it even affects the hormones so we need to think of it very rationally and very in a very realistic way that yes uh, we all know about vitamin c zinc vitamin d and so on and so forth but we need to make sure that we are uh, you know healthy and strong otherwise uh, there is no shortcut to that definitely ma'am i totally agree with you ma'am while we are on the topic of covid ma'am uh, so can we talk something about vaccination like uh, because it's a myth going on uh, around in the media and whatever like there are so many myths so coming from you as an uh, influencer you can really tell people what vaccination means and how yes. can they get it yeah yeah so the vaccination uh, first of all there are a lot of myths about the vaccination uh, unfortunately uh, this is a new disease and the vaccination is also relatively new so a lot of studies had not been done you know uh, like for example the oxford unity uh, university said that they have not done a study on the long term fertility uh, you know uh, as an impact of the vaccination so when it comes to that these myths you know they go about and they uh, you know they are uh, kind of magnified and hyped to such an extent that i know of uh, youngsters who are very, who you know who hesitate but i you know some boys you know who work for me uh, they were very apprehensive about the vaccination uh, so i told them that if you will not be alive what will you do with the fertility so uh, and that is just that the study has not been done it is there is no proof uh you know there is uh, it doesn't say that it will actually affect the fertility uh the fact is that the vaccination may not give you 100% immunity it may give 80% or 90% or something like that but then at least it is giving a protection and in most of the cases we have seen that if uh, you know the person has been vaccinated uh even if they contract the disease the it will be uh, it will not be life threatening it will just be much much milder so it's uh, really worth it to go ahead and get yourself vaccinated you know i have got myself vaccinated and uh, i know of boys who took alcohol after that and a couple of them uh, died because they had liver cirrhosis or they were already they had not got themselves tested they were uh probably having the disease and they got the vaccination and then they took alcohol so it's as i said it depends on you you need to be healthy fit and strong get yourself if you have any doubt at the most you can get yourself tested you know get a, a blood profile a cbc a complete blood count and then you can go and get yourself uh, vaccinated but vaccination is a must if you if you want to be alive 
Um, I don't think uh, anybody will have a second opinion on that. You, you know, you must get yourself vaccinated. And thank God that we have the vaccination in the first place. Yes, no, guys, no. मम्मी हिंदी में कहावत है ना जान है तो जहान है मतलब तो यहाँ पे वो वैलिड होती है कि भाई प्रिवेंशन मतलब पहले बार इन यूएसए दे हैव दिस दैट इफ यू दे आर यू नो ट्राइंग देर इज अ वैक्सीनेशन हेसिटेंसी इन यूएसए आल्सो इट्स जस्ट नॉट दैट इट इज अ you know ignorant or uneducated people there are people who think who are you know paranoid about some political agenda or something they think of something some stories and they they hesitate so uh, you know they had announced that we'll give you a beer or a free taxi ride uh, to the vaccination center so i i would like to ask them that if you feel that the vaccination can kill you in the long run or it can affect your quality of your life would you really trade it for a beer or a taxi ride i mean if even if, if you if if i give you a beer will you give me your life so you know you need to uh, not look at the uh, freebies that are coming with that you need to believe in the vaccination in the first place yeah. that is so important yeah i recently heard a news uh, in france or something like that uh, place uh, so they were uh, giving out like if you have to go to a cafe so you have to get vaccinated so at that particular day uh, all there was a line of uh, vaccinating getting people getting vaccinated in that particular day itself so they want to go to cafe so they have to get vaccinated <laughs> that's the logic they are following right now wow so, <laughs> so, yes, okay yes. Uh, so moving on to the podcast the aim that we are right now together to talk about is to know more about you and how come uh, Miss Tita has come to this particular journey, and what has she learned, and what she has, she can share with us right now. So, uh, moving on, the first question that I have to ask is like, as you were the first Indian participant uh, going on a world stage bodybuilding, so how did you prepare yourself? Firstly, I would like to know the physical aspects of it. Like, how did you prepare yourself? oh it's it was quite a process you know because uh, i was already in my late 30s uh, when i uh, started uh, you know in 2004 5 and uh, i had taken my son to the gym and uh, my son is an autistic child and i had been working with him for almost 20 years and uh, uh, so this was the first time that he said he wants to be to have a body and you know so Uh, because he would he wouldn't have been able to uh, maneuver through the gym himself he would need my uh, guidance there as a mother uh, so i was with him all the time and i faced a lot of opposition because whenever i would do weight training uh, uh, you know in the last 15 years the world has absolutely changed uh, but when i uh, went on for uh, weight training everybody made fun of me uh they thought that uh, why are you doing this and it's absolutely ridiculous you should be doing yoga you're not a man and uh, you know a lot of opposition a lot of it so it was a struggle for me every day uh with my son and because and we got we you know we would catch a lot of attention because he was a bit clumsy and i was all alone with him and uh, everybody thought that we were uh, very funny and silly people around so uh, there were a lot of uh, there was a lot of opposition and uh, a, a lot of objections about even allowing me to the gym so i started studying about it and i actually got qualified i did a lot of certifications and i started participating in little competitions some of the competitions uh, i was just the only one competing so uh, i got a i got a medal but then you know it had its own value you know i might have won it alone but then the fact that i made an endeavor to come alone and uh, so this this kind of things kept happening and then eventually i thought that now i have to take it to the next level uh, the bodybuilding that was there in india you know the girls would just wear shorts and go uh, you know maybe a dress and go and you know whomever the judges like they would uh, say okay she is a winner and i thought that was ridiculous and uh, i wanted to actually do a proper actual bodybuilding competition so uh, i the, the first person i got in touch was uh, a touch with was uh, shannon day from uh, bombshell fitness in florida uh, because we didn't have anybody in india so uh, you know i learned a lot from her i went to florida i stayed with her at uh, at the time her office was at daytona beach and then um i went to dennis james uh, in arizona i trained with him 
so there were a lot of people, you know, over a period of a few years, there was Fakri Mubarak in New York and Ahmed Asghar from Oxygen Gyms in Kuwait. And I participated, I represented India. Uh, you know, then again, I had issues with the Federation because I was the only woman and they wanted me to participate in, you know, some weird competitions here stage, which looked more like beauty pageants. And, uh, you know, I didn't want to do that. So, you know, we were always, you know, having uh, difficulties and challenges, even getting a letter from them. Uh, but then eventually I went on and I did a lot of competitions. So once I did uh, these competitions, you know, uh, a lot of girls started following me and, uh, you know, I did win. They were, you know, when there are people who are, uh, who, who find it awkward, you know, wearing a competition suit and the societal issues, there will be a lot of people who relate to you also. So it was uh, quite a process. And uh, of course, uh, when you come to uh, preparation, then it is, um, uh, you know, it's obviously, obviously a combination of practice, diet, uh, weight training, cardiovascular exercises, but it's just the way that it is, you know, very carefully calibrated uh, that, you know, um, it's such an art. And then you tend to realize that these small tweaks can do so much. And there's so much of science behind it. Yes, ma'am. As you said that uh, multiple people stared and there were a lot of uh, problems that you faced in the starting time of your journey, like not entering into the gym. So the concept that comes here is low kya kemingi. Like, were you affected mm. by that issue? Like what that person is saying about you or to you? Indirectly or directly? Because of course you you will come to know about it. You feel the eyes on you and there is a basic knowledge about that. So what did you feel regarding that? Yes, you know, it's like uh, uh, I was affected, but I think I was positively affected. Uh, if you, if somebody tells you uh, that you cannot do an, some particular thing, you have a choice. Either you can choose uh, to get demotivated and give up, or you can choose to prove them wrong. So it is the self-belief. If you know, uh, you know, with conviction, you know what you're doing is right, then it gives you strength. It gives you further strength that I got to prove them wrong. So that, that becomes my motivation. So, uh, you know, whoever said whatever, thanks to them, uh, you know, otherwise maybe I wouldn't have gone uh, that far. <laughs> That's good. So, uh, ma'am, moving on uh, to the next question that comes into the picture is, like, powerlifting and bodybuilding is truly a male-dominant society, right? It's like, uh, not right now during that particular time when you were starting your journey. So, uh, like, as you said that uh, you were the only girl participant, participant in, in the Indian events. So, while contacting those particular friends that you had in Florida and the other contacts that you made, how difficult was it and how difficult is it right now uh, to get into these competitions like at that time and what is the difference right now can you just elaborate on that yeah there were advantages and disadvantages at both the times uh, at that time uh, of course even beginning it was huge you know everybody thought <coughs> even exercise like a lot of people thought that why are you doing so much of exercise you're going to grow old one day and you cannot monetize uh, exercise. This is a waste of time. Why don't you do household work? And you know, it, this is uh, you're wasting the years of your life and all that. And uh, today we have an entire fitness industry, you know, in itself. It's I think the second biggest uh, business, uh, you know, financially. It's considered the huge business in this world today. Uh, so you never know. You know, at that time it was very very difficult to even go to the gym. And then you, you, you know, a lot of women were told uh, who would look at me and come to the gym. They were told that you, 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 you build a house in the gym. Don't come home. So um, uh, I think all women, uh, without exception, went through a lot if they would even think of the gym. And uh, there were even people at that time who would say that, oh, now you've got married. Why do you want a good figure for? And uh, you know, maybe she's aspiring something else. You know, that sort of things, uh, indirect things on the character. And it was very, very bad. Uh, and then on top of that, weight training. Weight training was not uh, considered something uh, that is there for women. Uh, we hardly saw uh, women participating. Uh, I was just doing a 60 kg bench press once, which is very, very ordinary. I think uh, the gir girls are doing double of that now. Uh, but, you know, I was offered a competition, you know, in South Africa because 
there were such few girls you would be the only one and there would be like a hundred boys and you would be the only one i did my certification with the international sports science association i was the only girl and there would be like 200 boys in the room uh, some of them would really respect uh, and you know give my example to their mother or to their wife or to their sister that you know she can do it why don't you come forward uh, but then some of them uh, you know would think that you know why the hell am i here uh, there were boys uh, when i trained i have i've had episodes where boys have said that uh, we will not come to the gym when this auntie is here we get a complex because she's lifting heavier and then there were boys who would uh, try to you know come in front of me overshadow me and try to lift heavier weights to show and then i would say that if you have to compete with an older woman uh, you know being a young boy then uh, you know then you are actually giving me a comp- you know compliment even if you are lifting much heavier than me like even now uh, so if a boy comes a 20 year old boy comes and tries to compete with me you're trying to compete with a woman in 50s so that means there's something in me i mean you know i take it like that i take it all positively so it was difficult in that sense but the advantage was that you were the only one and you would uh, mm-hmm. people who who loved you would really love you i mean like you were the only one with all the attention and you know so on and so forth now uh, there are hundreds of girls but you know no matter what it is still a male dominated uh, field absolutely male dominated field you see cricket cricket is uh, you know all over it's our like the cricket players are gods they are demigods but the thing is that mm-hmm. you know even now the male cricket is given a uh, far more attention importance money uh, you know it's commercially viable than you know the uh, the women cricket so um, you know bodybuilding of course uh, you know the girls undergo a lot of criticism uh, there is another side to it because of the because of wearing the uh, competition suit and the bikinis uh, you know we look at it as a very sacred dress because we feel that a woman who's done so much to build that body and structure and maybe study so much sacrifice so much uh, to be on stage it's not easy for a woman you know to be on stage a woman who's undergone childbirth and pregnancy and then you know she's fighting her family and there's a lot of money that is needed so we really respect that we, we consider it a very very sacred space because it's done as a sport and not uh, you know as a you know a sensuous uh, presentation it's not done like that so we really respect that but uh, you know now also the women uh, undergo a lot uh, the easy thing is that there is also there's greater acceptance so i see couples you know competing together and you know uh, you know boys taking their sisters for competition uh, there there is there are some older women you know you know whose uh, children are taking them for competition so it's like mm-hmm. it's always been you know this way or that way there are there are advantages and disadvantages uh, just that the kind of uh, you know things have changed that's the only scene ma'am well, currently or the like currently the indian society is changing like right now there has been a drastic change in the indian society but uh, still there are issues of like beauty standards that the indian girl has to follow or the body shaming perspective comes into the picture like if whatever weight she is she is not happy due to the instagram or the social media that comes into the picture so the body shaming and the beauty standards do you like to elaborate about these things yeah, yeah uh, oh okay beauty beauty is you know beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder and that may sound like a cliche but yes uh, mm-hmm. it is a woman's choice uh, if she wants to be muscular or she wants to just be lean you know the international federation of bodybuilding is now having various divisions in fact women have more divisions they have uh, bikini fitness uh figure uh, wellness physique uh, so w- they have five divisions for women and you know the way your you have your genetic disposition is uh, a woman can choose how she wants to be so now we have very few women in the physique division which t- demands uh, the greatest amount of uh, musculature you know you don't need a very high uh, muscle mass and you know high level of conditioning with the you know great great hypertrophy uh that is because uh you know we even the federation wants that the competition should not be too freaky so uh you know and secondly when you have uh you know more natural kind of uh, structure uh, on the stage it becomes very inclusive so now bodybuilding and fitness is coming uh, closer to how it should be ideally 
you know so it the, the, there is a lot of emphasis on presentation like i i am now judging the show so we have we give a lot of emphasis on the presentation also and uh, you know how you dress yourself how you tan yourself everything is important uh, because if we would have just kept it to pure bodybuilding it would never have grown that large the second thing is that we want that when girls uh, you know understand how diet and exercise affects their bodies and their abilities they will carry that you know they the sports women have a very short shelf life so what they do after retirement whether they retire at 30 or 50 what they carry back to their home and for their children and the habits that they form which will help them to live a good quality of life you know for the rest of their lifetime that is very important so just to make it all inclusive they have they are having all these divisions so i feel when it comes to body shaming uh you know if there is a woman who is not competing she may not be you know as perfect uh you know i have that perfect extreme leanness or our glass figure or whatever uh you know you in a bodybuilding show you may you are choosing the structure of your choice and making yourself that but i feel uh, yes you know sometimes a small amount of body shaming if i may say so is is also correct if you're so fat you're morbidly obese you know you need to you cannot say that i am fat and i love my curves and that's fine i mean why do you want to get fat you're setting a bad example because with that kind of obesity you are uh, you know actually giving a very bad example you will have a lot of lifestyle diseases you will have problem in your knees you will have cardiovascular disease why not promote a healthy lifestyle you know uh, having a go- having good health is actually uh, you know a way to thank god for the life that for the time that you have got on this earth and you should live your life to its full full fullest potential so if you're just going to eat uh, you know thoughtlessly and you're not going to you know respect the body that you have it's not good so i think to an extent it is bad but you know if you're just going to get morbidly obese you need to introspect somebody has to tell you so i think body shaming is not all it's not all black and white um you know one should not be too uh, it, it, there should be no extreme you know in a nutshell that you should not get so obsessed about it that you are getting you know anorexic or you are having you know those uh, eating disorders like you know uh, you bulimia or anorexia or you know you're you're falling sick you're missing your periods you know you're uh, you know you should not get that sticky thin like um, france has banned size 0 uh, models so it should not be that extreme but it, you should not also be morbidly obese so if there is a check it's it's a good thing so body shaming should be taken as a balance i have never been body shamed you know i have and um, yes when it came to when i was very muscular i got a lot of attention people used to look at me and say bahut maregi so i used to just smile and that's it i never felt bad about anything <laughs> and that might might have been a compliment <laughs> yeah yeah that might have been a compliment yeah, yeah. so yeah. Uh, i'm clearing uh, like the next question that would have been like uh, will be clearing out the basic myth like the first and the basic ground breaking myth that we have in the society is related to the protein supplements like currently mm-hmm. again currently again it's a bit cleared out but at that time when you would have been you would have you were training what was the scenario of the protein supplements and did you take any protein so oh yes i took protein supplement almost throughout uh now i'm more on dietary uh, protein the thing is that you know our skin is protein hair is protein our nails are protein hemoglobin is protein muscles are protein how can you avoid protein uh people don't bat an eyelid when they go and have a burger at mcdonald's and a coca cola but they are so conscious about protein supplements now what is there in a protein supplement most of the time even the vegan protein is either pea protein the uh, whey protein you know uh, if you uh, separate the casein you know what you call the paneer and you have the watery part the watery part is whey it is just dried isolated the the uh, you know the fat globules are removed the lactose is removed and then you just have the whey it's such a wonderful thing and then you know they're just uh, flavors and which are of very high quality so if you can drink milk 
then you can definitely have a whey protein. Uh, people who are vegetarians, they and you know, if you're exercising a lot, you're doing weight training, there is micro trauma. And you know, if you need to uh, cover up that much protein with natural diet, you will end up taking such high level of calories that it will actually get converted into fat and, and it may harm your health. Because, you know, mm -hmm. even over exercising that has its own repercussions, you know, the, the free radicals and toxins that are produced, there is too much of wear and tear. So there has to be a balance in everything. So if you're focusing a lot on weight training and you want your muscle size to grow, you are looking for hypertrophy, it has to be a high protein diet. If you're not able to get it with your natural diet, you need to supplement it. But having said that, it is a supplement. It cannot be your whole diet. So I, I, I've always uh, said that, you know, keep a balance. The whey protein supplement should not be in excess, maybe one scoop after your workout, but it is much, much better than having, uh, you know, what, what do you call Red Bull or, uh, you know, which people don't talk about just because it is on the advertisement. So Lay's mm -hmm. chips is on the advertisement. No one can eat just one. So then they go and have it and nobody says anything. It's fine. Everybody is having it. But protein, oh my God, so much of side effect. There is no side effect. And if you eat anything in excess, even if you eat, a you know, too many mangoes together, that too has, uh, you know, what you call side effects. So you just need to have a balance and not worry about whey protein. You need that. <laughs> Thank you for clearing out that myth uh, for the society. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, so, uh, ma'am, as we know that you did a lot of Bharatanatyam during earlier in the interview, also you said you will play the Bharatanatyam. So, you had a background of Bharatanatyam, then you got into bodybuilding. Like, my personally, I'm thinking that these two are very two different uh, sides like, of a coin, like Bharatanatyam one side and bodybuilding on other side. So, how can you, like, explain me this combination, like, how it helped you in your life? Or what are the advantages of this these two backgrounds on your particular side? Yeah, so I started, I was living in Chennai for about 8 to 10 years. And at that time, I was uh, a student of Bharatanatyam. I, had, I was doing pretty well. And then, of course, then there was a huge gap. I told you my son had uh, autism and I was looking after him. So, you know, my entire life was set aside. And then I got into bodybuilding and I had forgotten about that. But that was, you know, somewhere at the back of my mind and unfulfilled dream uh, that I wanted to complete my Arangetram. So uh, after I retired and I became a judge, uh, I realized that Bharat Natyam is also, it takes up a lot of strength. Uh, it's a very good cardiovascular exercise. It improves your speed, reflex action, flexibility. The mutras, they give you the acupuncture healing. There is chiro bheda, the head movement, the, the drishti bheda, the eye movement, the neck. That kind of exercise, it's a dynamic yoga. Nothing can give you. So it kind of fills in the blanks. And, uh, you know, if I may tell you this Natya Shastra, which is the fifth Veda, it had bench press, quads, everything documented in that. And if you go and study at the International Council of Cultural Research, they have, you know, this big rod with two bags. They were doing the bench press and everything, everything that was there in bodybuilding and all this. And, you know, you get to learn mythology and the metaphorical significance of uh, these, you know, the idol of Nataraj. So uh, actually, I... I'm actually one of the books that I'm writing, I'm writing two books at a time. Uh, so the, the second book was actually, you know, convergence of all the fitness modalities. So I'm also learning calorie part because I felt that with aging, my speed and my reflexes were a bit compromised and I got into that and I just loved it. So uh, where they have all the movements of the animals, uh, you know, which are incorporated in that uh, calorie part, the eight vadits. So, uh, you know, I think when you combine these, uh, especially in the COVID period, you know, you need just a little space. You can do Kalari Payat, Bharat Natyam, uh, weight training, body training. You don't need to go anywhere. You don't need to step out of the house. There is a huge world within, you know, a little space that you can create. And there is so much that you can learn. So, uh, yes, uh, I think that there is a convergence in these two arts. And uh, there is a lot of science in both of them. And I, I love how they complement each other. And, they, you know, wherever there is an extreme, these two things round off each other. So, 
you know that's it so just love doing them together and so summing up your experience i think uh, like you particularly love movement like when it's come to yes. the picture like uh, moving gracefully like i have like my uh, school in my college was done in karnataka so i know what kalri pet palat is and i have seen it wow. right in front of my eyes like people doing it and it was mesmerizing like looking at them and how the movements are done so uh, yes. like really hats off to you for doing that at right now at that your age and right now you're talking right now I'm talking right now i'm kind of fumbling because i am talking to someone inspirational i am taking so much from this interview thank you that i have done thank you you know uh, in our class there are 6 year old children and when i started kalari pad uh, you know i have been uh, uh, one thing you must give up you know when you're doing something at an older age we have accomplished ourselves and reached a certain stature and i see uh, you know looking at me a lot of older people my friends they join in and then they leave very quickly because you have to allow yourself to be very vulnerable you know when you are not able to do anything you you're failing repeatedly and then you are still doing it so uh, you know there is a lot of ego which older people have then they try to intellectualize everything uh, children are ready to fall so i think we we learn a lot uh, from the children also you know so that is uh, is and you know when you are we are amongst children you forget the world so it's such a beautiful experience it keeps you young when children basically children are looking for mentors to guide them to look for them they can definitely see a mentor in you and uh, uh, right now like i'm just putting it out there <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm just putting it out there my mother's name is also rita i like the different spelling r e e t a so i would be definitely uh, like sending her the link of this podcast and i'll be tell her to watch this podcast till the end so yeah <laughs> yeah um uh, thank you for joining us so just the last question that coming to the end of the podcast we have just to the end of the podcast so we joined you regarding this podcast was featured under it tell us your story campaign so any reviews that you would like to share about our campaign or any suggestions that you have for our campaign we really appreciate that and this is an absolutely uh, noble cause in my view i look at it uh, very differently with a divine perspective uh we all look at other stories you know a wise man is one who learns from others uh, mistakes and when you know the kind of uh, things we have done in life you know whatever different we have seen it is uh, you know also our sacred duty to convey to the world that you know uh, this is what we have experienced uh, for example uh, you, you know it may get a bit a tad bit longer but i must tell you my child was an autistic child and uh you know i was told he will never be able to speak and uh, only you know if you 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 know give them the kind of stimulation and work on them leaving the whole world aside for 24 hours for 10 15 20 years it is then when they come somewhere near normalcy now my life was such that i had actually come to a dead end i had a bit of challenging circumstances but then you know uh, after you know the age of uh, 25 26 he did his graduation post graduation from uk he gave a public um, uh, performance singing and uh, that seemed like near impossible a lot of doctors told me to journalize it but you know uh, when this uh, when he gave his music uh, you know presentation a uh, lot of mothers came to me and asked me how you did it so you know a uh, uh, lot of mothers are already in touch with me and uh, you know they just talk to me and they get strength so when you talk about story uh, you know uh, when I, at that time when i thought it was all impossible and i have to give away 20 years of my prime years i used to look at stories in readers digest where there were be there would be impossible cases and they got back to normal people got out of coma and so you know it is so important to tell your story and you know you have created that platform you don't know what you're doing i mean it's a divine cause because somebody may see that you know uh, impossible things are possible uh, it gives hope strength uh, to so many people who are suffering so i think it's a beautiful concept and you know that uh, if somebody faces a situation where everybody the whole world uh, is uh, against them uh, they can still you know if they believe inside them that you know what i'm doing is right they can do it over and over again they can fall to zero and again rise like the phoenix from the ashes 
and that more and more people will do only if they have seen others doing it so to present this example is an amazing thing and it's also a step in the evolution of uh, human mankind and the mindset so amazing job that you're doing really love it thank you ma'am for those words like those literally gave me the chills right now but okay thank you for those words uh, okay so uh, the next question ma'am that comes ma'am if like there are a lot of people watching this interview there are a lot of little girls teenage the indian women watching this particular interview any suggestion any thoughts that you want to pass on to them any wise words of wisdom that you want to tell them please do it um i would just like to give very two uh, short messages one is that for girls you know pursue your passion unapologetically like uh, i have faced a time when i was told don't study you know do the household work and you know whenever i would study i would feel as if i'm doing something wrong you know guilty you're made to feel guilty so a lot of girls who want to pursue their passion in you know no matter what way they're supposed that they're, they're told that you're doing something wrong i would just say pursue your passion unapologetically don't bother about the world that is one thing and second to the new generation in general uh you know i feel that in today's world the young generation has uh you know very bad listening skills you, you they hear you but they don't listen when you when you pe- you knew he- when you listen to people and perceive what they say you know you will say what you want to say but uh you must work on your listening skills on the, all the people in the young generation listen to people observe people around you and you know it will really help you to uh, move forward in life with a lot of wisdom thanks ma'am yeah, that was a great message to everyone uh thank you ma'am for having at the podcast with us right now on a parting note uh, i would like to talk about the book that you have been writing you, you earlier mentioned that you are writing two different books would you like to elaborate on each of them a bit more yes uh, you know the first book uh, i'm writing on is about convergence of the fittest modalities especially i wanted to bring forth the indian uh, arts you know we have a very rich heritage and the exercises are designed in such a way that you know they are really internalized and uh, you know they manifest themselves in an infinite way there is a spiritual side to it also so uh, it helps us they are very meditative uh, you know you 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 enhance yourself in so many ways so um, uh, like i'm writing that is my first book uh, that how a contradictory thing uh, you know the things which uh, are apparently contradictory uh in nature are actually uh, the same there is a universality in everything uh, so i have the book is on fitness also so i have you know i'm giving like chapter wise a lot about diet and exercises and the convergence of different uh, fitness modalities uh, that is one book because i can talk a lot on diet and exercise so uh, that is my forte and i want to give back uh the second is a book uh, you know about my biography so uh, this was already written by a wonderful lady her name is uh, paramjeet kaur uh, she has written it in hindi and uh, that has been taken up by a very big publication house in us now they wanted to translate that in so many languages but when you come to uh, uh, you know an international uh, platform then english to mandarin english to spanish are all easy you know from translating from hindi is a bit tough uh, so uh, there is a movie also being made uh, on this book by the name of aparajita rita jairat so now there there is a lot of you know uh, the, you know little stories involved in that so they said that the best person who can translate is you so i put my first book yes, aside for the time being and the next two months i am uh, working on the translation of the book and uh, so that you know that has really uh, made me very very busy and uh, yes. so the next two months that will be uh, what i'm going to concentrate upon congratulations ma'am there's so much I, i like i feel so happy right now just to talk about this thing about happening in your life right now movie getting also yes. made it's great yes, yeah. i'm so very much. blessed it's a great yeah. honor i think it's uh, god's gift to, to me you know for uh, uh you know standing by my beliefs and uh, fighting everything out uh, my whole life i think it's a uh, god's 
God's return gift to me. <laughs> and you will, you will see it one day for sure. It's yes. a very big production house that has taken it. You will, I'm yes, sure you'll definitely, see it. Yes, ma'am. Definitely, ma'am. We will see it. And we will definitely see it. And um, truly, ma'am, this podcast has been inspirational for me. Uh, just by listening to you, I can take so much points in writing that I should implement in my life right now that I've not been doing. Uh, but yeah. And uh, um, just on a parting note, ma'am, uh, like you have three rapid fire questions right now. You have to can answer them uh-huh. in just one line or you can elaborate if you feel like. Uh, the first okay. question that comes, what is the best advice you have ever received from someone? Mm. Okay, my father said that whenever you have a problem, look at it in the eye and face it and finish it right there. If you evade it, it will run behind you. So, you know, whenever there's a problem, I address it right away. So that was one, uh, you know, advice from my father, which I always follow. The next is, like, what is the one most important issue that you think uh, in the particular country that we have right now? Like, uh, in broader perspective, talking about India, what is the one most important issue, according to you, is there in India? I think people have become very materialistic, uh, you know, right from top to bottom. I I think if they, uh, you know, reshuffle their priorities, uh, a lot of things, whether it's corruption or even if it's poverty or unemployment, I think a lot of things will fall in place. If people understand, uh, you know, the, the value of the presence of life, that, you know, your life should be present. You know, when you go back from this, uh, there's no container service. You're not going to take anything with you. So if you live life to the fullest, then uh, a lot of problems that are there, because there's a, there's a whole world of problem, whether it's pollution or corruption, and everything is related to greed. So, you know, when you realize that life is uh, finite, I think that will solve a lot of problems automatically. So it's just the material world that, uh, you know, we need to uh, change our perspectives. And the last question that is it right now uh, is like, man, what do you see India to be in 2050, for example, according to your vision? Like, what do you believe India will be at 2020, 2050? I don't know what it will be, but I wish uh, that people are more loving and kind you know, it's just the the human emotion is everything. And I think we can learn a lot from animals that they live with a parallel sense of detachment. If people are loving and kind towards each other, I think the rest of the things, it's, it's very basic values that need to get back into us and everything will be solved. I don't talk of high tech stuff and, you know, all that. That is that is that that doesn't have any meaning. But, you know, if we are kind, loving, you know, these days, what you what is missing in people is a lot of compassion uh, for each other. Again, as I said, it's a very materialistic world now. People have hardened themselves, but you know, they even the most hardened people don't don't even realize that they have a longing uh, for a you know a deep seated affection. So I think if we have a kind and loving world, uh, you know, that is that is the thing which is most desirable. Mom, I really didn't expect these answers from all these three questions, these are a whole different perspective towards life that you can get from someone talking to someone this great extent. Like, uh, thank you um, for uh, having this interview with this podcast with us and joining with us right now. And uh, as I say to at the end of every podcast, everyone that I talk to, like, uh, welcome to our beast family. We call it a small family, a small group of people that includes uh, thinkers and who wants to change the society and right now you are changing the society and I would like to welcome you to our family as well uh, the Beast family and if you accept the invitation that's good. Well, I'm extremely blessed it's been wonderful talking to you uh, let me tell you you're one of the few youngsters who have excellent listening skills uh, so <laughs> and you're very wonderful and I'm and and the cause you know, the title, Unsung Beast, that is uh, amazing. I think a lot of people, there are infinite number of people who need to get their due. So it's a great cause. And I'm very, very blessed, very honored, very, very privileged to be a part of you all. Thank you. Thanks a lot, ma'am. Thank you for your time, words. 
थैंक यू बाय 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 टेक केयर टेक केयर थैंक्स फॉर वाचिंग दिस पॉडकास्ट ऑन द अनसिंग बीस चैनल I hope you were inspired by this amazing personality and learned something from them to implement in your own lives. Please like, share and subscribe to this channel for more content like this.